Dr. Mobin Syed and Dr. Daryl DeMello. Um, one in California, one in India. So we're going to have very different uh, things to talk about, too, from a geographic standpoint and what's happening around the world. I want to give you all a chance to introduce yourselves. Uh, before you do that, though, I do want to just give my my disclaimer that I'm starting to give now on my videos. Uh, I love bringing different voices on my podcast, on my blogs to talk about their thoughts, especially thoughts that are often not uh, given to people in mainstream news or on the, the, the uh, big tech social media platforms. But this is not medical advice. This doesn't mean I'm endorsing ideas. I really want people to be critical thinkers. I think that's what these two doctors are all about anyway, is, is patience, understanding what's going on, having a good knowledge base, uh, being able to advocate for yourself and, and talk about these issues in a way that you can ask questions that are that are helpful. And I think these two doctors are going to help you uh, as well, just understand their perspective so that it will help with your questions, even as you're seeking more information about this topic. Um, but I hope you 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 uh, take this and do your research, ask your questions, and feel more empowered to be a critical thinker. That's what I hope. I hope this inspires people to do. So um, why don't we talk, start with Dr. Bean? That's how you're known, right, Dr. Bean? Um, you're in California. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So just a very quick one. Number one, thank you very much for having me. Number two, yes, I'm known as Dr. Bean. I am a medical doctor. I do not practice here in the US. My primary work that has been for 30 years has been teaching medicine. And so I've been teaching medicine before. When the pandemic started, that is when my team and I decided to jump in and start helping with the medical education related to COVID. So over the last 18 months, we have done, I think, more than 1,000 talks. And we <laughs> have drawn more than 30,000 illustrations, reviewed about 10,000 studies and so on. So that has been the uh, contribution. That has been the blessing that I had that opportunity. Uh, other than this, I run drbean.com. I'm CEO and founder. So once again, thank you very much for having me. Okay, right. So this is your website here. And so I, I should just give people up front the opportunity to know how to find you. So is this the best way, drbean.com, or, or is there another option that they should consider? So so they can find me here at drbean.com, but this is mostly my educational material. If they wanted to interact more or find more of the content, then it is free on YouTube as well, at least with the COVID. Okay. I will, and I'm going to find your YouTube channel in a second. We'll show people. Um, Dr. Demello, why don't you uh, introduce yourself as well? Thank you, Allison. It's great to be here uh, with Dr. Bean, with Dr. Mobin, and you. Uh, I'm based in Mumbai, India, and my name is Dr. Daryl Demello. I've treated patients, uh, about 10,000 plus patients, and their family members. So we're looking at another 50,000 family members and also done prophylaxis, both prophylaxis for COVID, acute COVID, and prophylaxis. Now I've started prophylaxis for vaccines. So I, I'm doing a lot of post-COVID cases now, more than the actual acute COVID cases. In India, we have, you know, I think we are done with the acute COVID phase, unless some weird variant pops up. But given, given the history of virology, uh, as the virus mutates, it gets less potent, less lethal. Uh, yes, it can get more transmissible, but it's not going to get so bad. And the bad days are over. Uh, I also will like to state up front that whatever I will say here on your on your channel, on your uh, on the discussion, is I'll be sharing my experiences in treating patients. Uh, this is not for this is for you as a physician or a healthcare giver to use or not use up to your own discretion and your own country standards. This is what we've done. This is why I've been successful. This is why I've had great results. Okay. Great. Thank you. And this is uh, Dr. Bean's YouTube channel, 423,000 subscribers. So uh, he's got his silver play button behind him and uh, he has earned his right to uh, be on. <laughs> YouTube, but not an easy time to be on YouTube right now talking about this stuff. Um, that's for sure. So, okay. Uh, Dr. Demella, I also wanted to ask you, where should people find you? I know you have a Facebook group, so I wanted to give you a chance to plug that as well before we get started. 
we 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 have a, a Facebook group called Early COVID Treatment. Uh, people can find me on my website, drdaraldemello.in for India. And uh, I mean, my I, I think I'm pretty pretty accessible on the net. I want to switch the topic real fast to natural immunity because that's a really hot topic right now. It seems to be very controversial in the United States, and you'll often see now in headlines or news articles, it'll be put in quotes, you know, air quotes, natural immunity. Or I saw a New York Times headline that said so-called natural immunity, like, you know, it, it's not really a thing, but we just call it that. It's just interesting to see how how the messaging around natural immunity with this particular virus is different than, say, what we've seen in, in the past with other viruses. So since you you both have a more global perspective on on this, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, how, how, how is the United States differing on that topic versus other parts of the world? And, and what are the implications for that? So... Um at least with the US, what is interesting for me is if you go to European countries, many of the countries, Israel as well, they have uh, for vaccination, for example, vaccinating uh, people and then giving them a passport. Many of the countries have said, if you can prove that you were infected and you have recovered and you have a PCR or antibody test that you can show, then in some countries they say for three months you are as good as vaccination again from my own point of view this is my opinion from the studies that i've seen that vaccination uh, natural infection and the result of that the the body's protection is longer lasting as well uh, we saw the israeli study a few days ago that it is even 13 times better than the vaccine however not going in that part the israel says for example 90 days after this some european countries say six months after the event of the natural infection, one is considered eligible. In the US, it is not. And I think that is a mistake. We should consider, may that be three months or six months, but at least we should recognize that somebody who became infected, we have 45 million people who became infected. Somebody who became infected, they have recovered. They actually have their immune system trained and aware of how to attack this virus. One comment I want to make, which is a ancillary but important, and that is some folks, when I talk about it, some folks have said to me that, hey, we couldn't do this with the flu virus. Look, it changes every year, and we have to do a revaccination and everything. Coronaviruses are very different from flu viruses. They are not similar. Coronaviruses mutate lesser than flu virus. They have their own uh, proof readers as well. They try to stay stable, so they need to be treated as coronaviruses. Okay. Uh, Dr. Dumela, do you have any thoughts on that as well? Uh, in, in my view, and this is, I'm going to give you a personal view and official view of what the government talks about. In my view, immunity derived from natural infection will be long lasting, will be the best immunity you can get. However, there are caveats to that. You also got to be fit. You got to have the immune system to be able to withstand uh, the attack of the, of the, and again, it's not the virus. It's the body's immune response system overdrive, the tsunami, the cytokine storm that hits you, which results in all your problems. It is really not the virus. The virus is just a terrorist. It's only irritating the body to overreact. So for me, natural immunity is much, much better if you are fully fit, if you're young, if you don't have any, any uh, comorbidities. Uh, if you have all that stuff, then you need to be under protection. And without the vaccine, I had already put people on prophylaxis with certain drugs. The common one which I've used is vitamin D. Vitamin D, I've made sure many of my patients and most of my patients have very high levels of vitamin D. Here, we, we have had an ability to check uh, uh, COVID antibodies for patients before the vaccine came into play. So I was able to check every patient and see who really had COVID, true COVID, not a false positive, but a true positive, or even if they were false negative, I was able to check them and after the anti after their diseases, check them and see whether they had antibody. If they had antibody, they're pretty good. Now, as I see, you know, as I see these same patients after the vaccination, I can see that the effect of the infection plus the vaccine gives them very, very high antibody levels. 
we're talking of really significantly high antibody levels. And from a this is from a personal perspective, from a official government perspective, after you've had a, a COVID infection, you can take the vaccine only after 90 days. You cannot take it. You cannot be given the vaccine during the period of your COVID and for 90 days after that. So there's a, the government also has been wise enough not to force people to take a vaccine when the throes of, of the inflammation. I, I, use a, I use a layman term. When you are having a, a raging fire, you don't want to add more fuel to it. You don't want to add more wood to it. So you don't want to give the patient more vaccine when they're in the acute phase. So let that whole process die down. It takes 90 days. And then you give them the vaccine, you probably will do better. Anybody who's a diabetic, anybody who's at serious risk, anybody who's a senior have been told to take the vaccine and, and make it happen. Okay, so, I mean, are they going to get COVID? Absolutely. The whole world, everybody in the world is going to get COVID. Uh, whether it's next week or next month or next year, everybody will get COVID. We want them to get COVID in a very deliberate, controlled fashion, not in a haphazard manner. We don't want our hospitals to run out of beds. We don't want to have a lack of oxygen supplies. We don't want to have lack of medicines. Here's something that, that, we play, that played out very well for me and for most people in India. Early treatment. As soon as you had symptoms of COVID, take the treatment. It is inevitable that the discussion we just had about the natural immunity, there is going to be comments and the responses which would say, these doctors are saying, go get infected and that. So I want to make sure that people are aware, trying to get infected can be deadly. So right. that is not something that is uh, advised. And we should do everything we can to protect ourselves. Even when we get it, we're going to talk about the early treatment. So please realize whatever way you can protect yourself and you should protect yourself. That is the thing. Stay away from the disease as much as possible. Those who have become infected and now they have recovered, we should recognize them as having good immunity as well. So just wanted to make sure I clarify that. B back to, no, you, to you. That's a well, that's a good caveat, because I think one of at least one of the values I can see on on uh, not necessarily just becoming a COVID chaser, like I'm going to find somebody and try to be infected is we've been learning so much over the time since we knew COVID was a reality. We were used to think that putting people on ventilators was something that would be standard practice. And now we see, you know, the, the problems with that. So it, it would seem logical that the longer you can avoid it, the the better you may fare because there will just simply be more information and more options for treatment available versus if you had gotten it a year ago. So I can see some value and or not just some, but a lot of value in what you just said. Don't forget you can support my work by also checking out my sponsors and having a glass of wine or a cup of coffee in honor of free speech. The first is allisonwinepromo.com, allison with one L, winepromo.com. You get 50% off of my favorite Argentinian Mulbacks and 50% off of shipping. They have switched out the three bottles from the last pairing, so check them out. Many of these are high-altitude wines. They're very robust. They use no flavoring, no filtering, no dyes, and no excess chemicals. But if you need something to wake you up, like a strong cup of coffee, check out TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison, TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison. They've got a wide variety of roasts. These are high altitude, shade grown Nicaraguan coffees that are also USDA certified organic. They also do a lot of great work to help prevent sea turtle nests from being poached. You can support their work by also going to TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison and become a sponsor. And... They'll even show you video of when the sea turtle nests that they're protecting are hatched. So check out my sponsors and support free speech wherever you are.